You might remember this field from last summer. We spent quite a few nights here. I've come back here because, well, it's easy to park. We've got bins, which is where I've just been to put the rubbish in. As you saw on previous videos, you've got free water, free waste disposal. It's amazing. It's a great little place. And only four euros. So yeah, Mika stayed with her mum for the second night, which has given me plenty of downtime. All I've done is just chilled out. I've not done anything at all, apart from the run that I did yesterday, which for some people might sound like you're not chilling out, but it does help. It does de-stress and refresh the mind. So that was nice. I was going to go for a run today, but I don't know if I'm going to. We'll see. Well, I've managed to find some motivation to go running again. What I'm going to do today is just a real slow, famous last words, jog around the forest. So it should be nice and easy on the, <coughs> excuse me, nice and easy on the legs. Because uh, yesterday I did what every runner does. And like I said, I've not run for four weeks. Four weeks today it would have been. And I just went fast. Not fast, but faster than you should if you've not run for four weeks. So all my calf, my soleus muscles here are really sore. So they're going to hurt and hopefully i don't have any problems while i'm running i'm prone to achilles and gastroc and soleus muscle strains injuries i think i've just got two short tendons but yeah anyway enough whinging so let's forget about the problems and let's concentrate on getting a run done Go running. This is why it would be silly not to get out and run because Germany is just amazing for stuff like this. Just built for running this place. Two prints on the floor here. Not seen anyone yet. Made it to the canal. It's windy. So we're gonna go back. Hopefully not get overtaken by any boats. We probably will today. So I'm guessing the boat was probably doing about six knots. And my speed is probably not too much different. So that might catch up with me. And then there's the lock, so that'll be pretty cool if we both get to the lock at the same time and there's no queue and it goes straight in and get it on video. Back in the forest. Beautiful everywhere, even the locks. waiting up there as well it's a tourist attraction so let's go and check it out so the other day when we walked down or when i walked down i walked when we was parked in the forest at night i walked down that embankment to here and i can see there's barriers there and cameras <laughs> probably saying no entry or you'll be shot yeah there's a camera lot up there common sense just says you know it's just somebody having a quick look isn't it but you just never know how much trouble you can find yourself in in a, a country like Germany. Yeah, it clearly says you're on camera, don't go there. Oh well. Right, let's get up to the dam. Hey, uh, dam? Let's get up to the uh, lock. So that's where we parked the other night. Right hand side in there. 
And that camper was there as well the other day. All right, let's get to the viewing platform, have a look. As you probably heard on that video, there was Russian voices, the Ukrainians. So Germany is one of the only countries in Europe, well, a lot of countries have taken in Ukrainian refugees, but Germany has taken the most, to my knowledge anyway. Literally everywhere you go, you hear Ukrainian voices, Russians. There's also a lot of Belarusians here and Russians and all other nationalities. People got evacuated and that was it. If they were living in Ukraine, let's stop a sec. If they were living in Ukraine, whether they were holiday, sorry, if they were in Ukraine, whether they were on holiday or non-resident or resident is basically what I'm trying to say. They're allowed to stay in Germany, which is why Amika's mum's here. She was not a permanent resident in Ukraine. She was from Belarus. She was just staying there. And Germany have granted her refugee status. So there's just hundreds and hundreds of Ukrainians here, which is a good thing, I guess. Better than uh, being forced back home. Slava Ukraine. God bless them all. God bless everyone. War is not a good thing. I can tell you that for, for nothing. And that's coming from an ex-paratrooper. War is not good. And neither is this direction. <laughs> I think I've gone the wrong way. As long as there's no snakes, we're all right. Right, let's keep going. The moment we see a snake is the moment we know we've taken the wrong turn. I know I can get out that way because the track's up there. Let's go this way. Jesus. You don't know how afraid of snakes I am. Amika went to a wildlife centre and I got them to put a snake around my neck and I was like, it's tame. What was this worry about? But in the wild, you just don't know, do you? Anything could get you. Anything. Excuse me, sir, have you got a ticket? Yes, it's blown upside down. That's useful. When did that happen? I bet. It was when I had my air vent on and it's flipped it. Because the air will come through here, it will reverse and pull it from where it can. 26 minutes past five. The Garmin watch tells you all sorts of information. So I've been for two runs, just an eight kilometers in 40 minutes. It says that I'm using maximum aerobic capacity there, that's high. My VO2 max is superior, 56. That's about as low as it's ever been. And apparently I'm overreaching. If we go off the Garmin watch, it means that I probably need to have two days off running, which is convenient really, because it's Saturday and Sunday. I'm uh, traveling back to the UK. A bit of a mission to get back to the UK. It's nine and a half hours from here to Calais. I'm driving a van and I'm not going to be doing 70. I'm going to be doing about 52 miles an hour. Well, I'll sit with the light. It's probably 55 actually. It says 52 on my dash, but I'm going quicker than that because obviously I've got bigger wheels and they're not calibrated. I don't actually know what time it is. It can't be far off that time. Yeah, I've got half an hour. Yeah, so it's probably going to take us about 11 or 12 hours because we'll stop a few times as well to eat and cook and things like that. So yeah, I'm hoping to leave here about nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah, we should get there sort of eight, nine o'clock in the evening. And then it's an early start. I need to be up at six. Yeah, I need to be up at six, get to the uh, terminal. I can't remember what time they've got the uh, ferry. It's either eight or nine in the morning. It's pretty early. I did it on purpose because it's bank. Well, it's not bank holiday, but it's the end of the Easter holidays. So it's going to be the roads are going to be super busy. So I think I get back into England at nine o'clock in the morning. So we should get up past the M25. Hopefully there's no accidents at that time in the morning and start making our way back up. I think probably up the M1. I'm just going to go whichever way the sat nav says so it's the quickest. I can go M1 or M40. It really doesn't make any difference. Eventually you're going to get across to the other side. There's not a lot in it. And then I'm looking forward to getting home and opening the mailbox because I have got a charge uh, for not paying the Dartford crossing. I knew I had to pay it within 24 hours. I'm fully aware of that. I've been through there many times before. I broke down and I broke down in France. And when I woke up the next morning, I was still in the state of um, not panic, but high levels of stress. So the last thing that was on my mind was, oh, don't forget the Dartford charge. So yeah, I've got to um, I've got to get back and pay that. And you've got 14 days to pay it to get a discount. And I get back on the 15th day. Well, when I win the lottery, I'm going to build a castle. I'm going to have a bridge on there. And I'm going to charge people to come across. 
I won't make much money from it because I don't think anybody will come across it. It's five o'clock, it's tea time, and I've only had breakfast, so I'm going to get some food on the go. I'm going to jump in the shower. Um, I need to see how much electricity I've got because I'm getting a bit low. It's done nothing but rain and thick clouds, so I was pulling in about 230 watts earlier, um, so hopefully I've got some uh, some charge. Obviously, I don't have electric cook-ups, so uh, I rely on the sun for all my energy or charging from the alternator, um, but I've done no driving, really. I've been here for, what, four or five days now? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm into the fifth day now, so... Cool, let's get some food on the go. In Germany, people just pee wherever they like. Regardless of whoever's around, they just take a pee. Craziness. Utter craziness. Right. We are going to drive up the road. It's going to rain, I think. Clouds are black. About one kilometre, and there's another car park. I've not stayed there this time. I stayed there last time. I like it there. It's nice. Um, hopefully I can get the spot that I want which overlooks a house and a field and yeah we're just going to park up there tonight um, it's another paid car park I think it's uh, same price four euros and 12 euros I'll have to put no four euros and eight euros I'll have to put eight euros in because uh, it's six o'clock uh, and if somebody comes around and knocks the door at six o'clock in the morning then uh, yeah I'm going to get myself in trouble aren't I so we'll pay for the extra we'll pay for the 24 hours uh, but I'm going to be up and uh, on the road by nine o'clock tomorrow on our way back to Calais. Don't even want to think about that journey. Don't even want to think about it. Right, let's get moved. I've not had a shower yet, so I'm going to park up, have a shower. I've had food. Food's more important after a run. Edit a video maybe and just relax for the evening. Mika's again with her mum tonight. So um, ideally I would want Amika with me tonight because we're going to get up early. It's no big deal, is it? She needs to be with her mum. So, right. Let's get off these ramps and get up the road. Oh, we sunk a bit last night. Bloody hell. Stay of that. I thought I'd gone down a bit. Also got an injury. I don't know if you can pay by card. Some of the machines you can't pay by card, so I'll have to go and check that out. Hopefully we can. I seem to remember I paid by card at the machine in front of here last time. Maybe not, I can't remember. I can't remember to be sure. It does look like there's a card thing on it. Yeah, there is. Pigeon. He's just killed a pigeon and he's now eating it. I don't know if I got that on camera, if you could see that clearly, but it was um, some kind of bird of prey anyway, and it was ba basically a caught pigeon and was, uh, yeah, just eating it alive at the side of the road. So I've just discovered something absolutely amazing. Uh, the reason I'm running the engine is because I'm a little bit low on power. I'm sure I'm going to be fine, but I'm just going to run it for 20 minutes while the inverter charges the, uh, the batteries in the back of the van. Here's one.
Anyway, <laughs> as I was saying, I've just discovered something fantastic about this EcoFlow River 2 Pro. You can change how quickly it charges. So obviously if you're in a house or something like that, you can just put it to maximum. Um, but if you're like me and you're in a van and your inverter is only 500 watts, you can change the setting to 500 watts. So obviously if it's higher than 500 watts, it's gonna kick in, it's gonna build its way up through the wattage, it gets to 500, 600, 700, which is where the surge is on that inverter, and it'll push into 800 and it'll just cut out. Um, which is what it was doing, I did it as a test just to see what would happen, that's exactly what happened. It's now set to 500, and it's nicely charging. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm just gonna charge this up for about another 10 or 15 minutes, and that'll do us, just in case we need to charge anything up, um, maybe use the air fryer in the morning, I'll put it into there and I'll be able to have my chocolate croissants. Right, I'm starting to lose the plot because I've been in this van for too long now. Um, normally I get out and do loads of stuff, but I've just enjoyed not having a Mika and just chilling out. So yeah, got a bit of cabin fever going on. The run did help, I must admit. I might actually go for a walk. If the sun decides to uh, bring itself back out again, I might actually go for a little walk around this lake, stretch the legs, get a bit of mental, positive mental health going, get ready for the journey home. I think we're gonna have to wear the parachute regiment top on the journey home, because uh, yeah, it's a long old way, and uh, I mean, it's not that long. It's gonna take, it's probably gonna take us 11 or 12 hours, as I said earlier, so I need to make sure that I'm ready for anything, because anything could happen, literally anything could happen, as we found out last time. I'm going to get myself in the back and have a shower now and then I'll work out whether I'm going to edit a video or go for a walk or do both. But one thing I am going to do is get a non-alcoholic vice beer. Come on, let's get in the back. Good morning. <coughs> so it's Saturday and it's time to drive back to England. So I've got the top on, ready for anything just in case anything happens and I can remember there's worst things that happen. I'm just getting the final things ready. I got most things ready last night. All I had to do this morning really is get changed. Have a quick bite to eat. Just gonna brush my teeth. And then I'm gonna empty out all of the water, fresh water out of the van. Because there's no point in traveling. I think I've got about 40 liters of water, which is like, you know, it's like carrying half a tank of fuel around with you. It's just pointless. I've got no reason to carry it with me. Unless of course we break down again and then I'll have no water. I'll deal with that. Deal with that if that happens. Confident we're gonna make it back. Nah, shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't be a problem at all. There's no issues with the van. No major issues anyway. Yeah. Cool, so I'm gonna head off now. I'm just gonna get this water out of the van. I'm gonna head off, pick up Amika, say the goodbyes to each other. Then we've got, I think it's probably, if we leave, let's say we leave at half past nine, I reckon it's gonna be like seven o'clock by the time we get there this evening. That's to Calais, by the way. What a mission. Last time when we left Germany, it seemed like we traveled quite far to get to Calais, well, to Dunkirk, but we actually started from the Black Forest with four hours from here. So it's significantly further this time, but switch off. Get it in your head, you're not getting there till this evening. And just focus on driving. That's all we can do, isn't it? That's all we can do. Right then, let's go get Mika. Just wait for the uh, <coughs> diesel heater to go off. Looking forward to it, actually. I like this. I like driving. I like driving in the van. It doesn't bother me. It only bothers me when there's traffic. I don't mind being stuck in traffic, not moving. Unless you need to be somewhere for a certain time. But I don't like being in traffic that you have, that's constantly moving and stopping and starting and people are cutting each other off like rush hour traffic because it's just dangerous it's dangerous and people just drive like idiots the other thing that i'm going to do as well i'm going to put that in the ticket machine because that is valid till six o'clock this evening so if anybody wants to come and play by the river or at the kids park in the rain then they won't have to pay right let's go my good deed done for the day may god bless this journey who knows who knows what could happen do you know what it doesn't matter if anything happens the only thing that matters on this journey home is i've got work on monday and amika's got school but i'm not going to leave five days early to get back just because of that if we break down we break down right amika's been collected you all right yep nice lipstick you got toothpaste in your lipstick on your lips and you've got makeup absolutely everywhere <laughs> we do makeup with my you had a nice time? Yeah. Yeah? What have you been doing? Uh, makeup? <laughs> yeah, makeup. Lots of makeup, drawing. 
drawing, loads of drawing, races mm. in the corridor. Yeah? Yeah. That's cool. Right, we're going to get on the road now, long way, but it's got to be done. So we'll see you on the road. Where is that? We've got a British flag on the back, or is it Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia. Oh, no, it's Emirates. Emirates, we like Emirates. Presents for people. More like for you. Yeah. I thought that bit burger down there was yours. Oh yeah, that one's fine. Like the non-alcoholic bit burger. Okay. So, and then Granddad can have the alcoholic beer bit burger. This one's a present for Granddad, I think. Yeah, a bit burger. Yep. That one's for Dave. This one's for Dave. For being a good friend. For helping us when we broke down. This that one's for me. Yep. And that and one's one for you. Mine. I'm going to put this back and then organise them so they don't kill us when we crash. It's raining outside a little bit. I need to put this somewhere where it's not going to slide around. Which is probably nowhere. Yeah, hypermarket done. Right, so hypermarket dash. No, we keep forgetting that they all... Um, close at like eight o'clock and we always seem to get back over at eight o'clock. Mad dash, managed to get the wine, got the beers, family will be happy, got the gin for the sister. <laughs> I'm watching you. I'm watching you. You'll have to get in this side. No you don't. Don't know why I said that. Rubbish dash. Rubbish dash, here just pass it in. <laughs> oh, loads of rubbish. So what we're gonna do now, we're not gonna get to the sunset in time. Um, so rather than rush and not make it, we're going to drive as far west as we can go now till we get to where the beach is, and then we're going to drive south down towards Dunkirk. Are we? Yeah. I'm what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's do it. I'm a rock star. You're a weirdo. If you remember last time we came back from Germany last summer, we were racing to get to the sunset. We're doing the same thing. We've got. 12 minutes until we get to the beach well wherever i've navigated to fuel lights just come on so we've come from just above munich i suppose people know where that is um all the way to ostend belgium um and the fuel lights just come on so i probably should slow down a little bit but uh yeah let's see if we can get to the sunset I don't think we're gonna make it. Too many lights and crossings and waiting for everyone else. Let's go. Let's go. We're almost there. I think we missed it there. <laughs> Left here and then right. There's just loads of police there. I don't know why you've got the speed limit is. So there we go, 30 miles left on a full tank, 449 miles, average 31.8, that dropped significantly as we sped up to try and get here for the sunset. Nine hours, 41 minutes of driving, about 11 hours in total because we went to the shop and all sorts of stuff, so not, <coughs> not too bad. How have you felt? Happy. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? You still got makeup on? It's not makeup. It's well, suntan and you've still got makeup on because your eyes, close your eyes, gently. Yeah, you got blue eyes. Yeah, mum made your... me into a clown yesterday. Show me your earrings. Yeah. Wow, awesome. That's so cool. So I thought her earrings, um, her ears, when she came to live with me, she had no earrings in anymore. I don't know, they got taken out or lost or something, didn't they? So it was like, right, we've got to go through that motion and probably re-piercing them again. Um, and she didn't want to do them, so we didn't. But turns out the holes are still there. So we're going to get you some earrings now, can't we? Yeah. Yeah. I've just realised it's 8.43. We left at 9.41. So it has taken 11 hours uh, to get here, which is what I thought it would take. I thought it would take, like, sort of add a bit of time on because you're driving a little bit slower in a van 
and then put some time on for stops as well. So yeah, all good. Right, we're gonna have a go. We're going to go and have a quick look at the beach. One Cork Vegas. I need to lock the van because I've not locked it. Go straight over. Straight over. Rob the van and go. Let's go. It's a little bit windy here, but um, I'll film what I can. I can hardly walk. My legs have gone super stiff from that run yesterday. I can't get you. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> Just turn around, look, look at me. Your face is a cross between like sunburn and makeup. Hi! Can we get through it? We can go up here and then through there. Go! Oh, Jesus! <laughs> look at all the bubbles from the wind. We were going to move down the road and find somewhere better to park for pizza, but we've just seen these gun emplacements from World War II. So go and grab your jacket. Um, we're just going to nip out and try and get some footage of it before it's too dark. Locked off, but we'll definitely be able to look through the windows. One of them had like a glass front on it with loads of people. Well, not loads of people. I saw a German in there. Oh no! A Nazi German. Not the, not the Germans from nowadays. These were the bad ones. No! It's so dramatic. I am so sorry about the wind. Right, there you go. Yeah, there's a German in that one. Look at that. Scary. Yeah. No way, German. What's on the other side? This is high. So those guns would have been shooting at the ships. They made my heart race. Let's, let's cross over, hold on. All of those, all those, Been Germans all the way in here, Nazi Germans. Yeah, I think. But about the good Germans? Is there any good Germans? There was, yeah, but the soldiers were all the bad ones. Why are you thinking right now? Right now. 100 years ago. No, like, it's happening now, Russia. Oh, yeah, there's, yeah, sort of. Okay, what we could do, one half term or something, we'll come over here and I'll take you around all of the places, yeah? Do you want to go to like the museums and learn all about it? And there was paratroopers as well, yeah? Yeah. see me so yeah this is Dunkirk um, I can't remember the name of the place but the ports over there 
and right now we've got police behind us and um, they've also blocked off the road up there they let us through because obviously we're coming down to the beach There's fishermen everywhere down here but this is a key point for the migrants um, to try and get across the water into Europe uh, last summer we were here we witnessed it uh, Amika was asleep with a friend uh, in their van and um, me and Greg we basically um, we didn't realize they were migrants at the time we thought actually that they were criminals trying to get into the vans or we were trying to get them away there's like literally hundreds of vans we tried to push them away from where we were um, and then put two and two together and realized actually it's people with a boat trying to get into the water so I've got lots of footage of it unfortunately because of the adrenaline and some of the things that happened the GoPro actually only filmed for a period of time and then stopped so I didn't realize it had stopped um, so there's a big gap in the, in the footage but then I started it again and yeah you get to see wow this road's terrible I'm not going to give too much of it away because I'll spoil the video so but yeah we're just coming down here it's, it's totally safe they, you know they're not interested in the vans they're not interested in campers loads of people come down here camping um, they're only interested in getting into the water and getting to England, that's it. They're, there's no, um, there's never any problems with uh, with migrants and local people or visitors. How far down does this road go? I don't know. I think I might just turn around now. Yeah, I'm going to turn around and then um, you'll get to see the police because uh, they're everywhere. Wow, that water's so What the hell are you doing? <laughs> are you do <laughs> it's on backwards. I don't like it on backwards. You are a moron. I've just been outside for 10 minutes taking photographs. Yeah, all along here is fishermen. There's police barricaded the road at the end. Well, well barricaded, but the you saw them on the video when we came in. And then there's a pit, um, police patrolling up and down. I just want to reiterate, before anybody says anything, why have you brought a kid here? There's loads of people with kids here. Last time there was families playing on the beach and everything. The migrants are not interested. All they want to do is they've paid thousands of pounds to want to get on a boat and get out of here. That's it. So there is no harm. There is no threat. People down here are sunbathing in the summer. There was a guy, Hans, that we saw last time playing the piano and the migrants just straight into the sea. So before anyone says, why have you brought your kid there? It's really dangerous. Trust me, it's not. It's absolutely perfectly fine. I would let Amika cycle up and down here on a bike now if it wasn't 18 minutes past 11. Totally safe. I feel really, really calm. I actually feel safer sleeping here knowing that there's Albanian gangs trying to put people from Syria and all over the world into the sea to try and get to Britain than I do sleep in some of the places in England. How crazy is that? <laughs> What's right. <so> funny? <laughs> we need to get up early. I'm not sure what the timings are. I know I need to be there at nine for the train. So I'll work out the maths in my head, how far it is and etc. But probably going to get up about quarter past six, I would think. Maybe half past six. Right, well, we're going to go to bed now. Uh, but before we do, have you had a nice holiday? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. What's been the best part about the holiday? and nearly breaking my ankles. Not seeing them on. Second to see Wooly. Second? <laughs> Should be first. <laughs> well, to be fair, activities are definitely better than seeing parents, aren't they? <laughs> Rude. So yeah, it was all good. Nothing that we didn't expect. Everything went to plan, apart from when we broke down, obviously. Belts breaking is not a big deal, is it? It is. Or it is. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe because it will make our channel bigger and there will be more better videos just for you. Yeah, so as Amika says there, and I know we've said it a few times recently, make sure you subscribe. There's a lot of people that aren't subscribed. Yes, I'm talking to you. Yes, you. you. Yeah, you've not subscribed, have <laughs> yes. you? Yes. 
Yeah, so as Amika said, please make sure you subscribe. Honestly, you don't know how much it makes a difference to anybody, anybody on YouTube, not just us. If you watch anyone on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to them. The way it works is the more people that subscribe to the video like this one, the more the video gets pushed by YouTube. So if you subscribe right now, YouTube will recommend it to more people and more people. And then if they subscribe, more people. All of a sudden, the video views will go up and up and up. And then all that does to us is it motivates us to make more videos for you. Now, subscribe. <laughs> the button's right here for you. Right, I think they got it. Right, see you in the morning. Corgi, say bye. Rawr.